The plants and animals around us show a striking diversity of sizes and shapes. For example, ants and elephants differ in size so dramatically that it would take roughly 2 billion ants to balance a scale across from a single elephant. Understanding how evolutionary and developmental processes give rise to such an array of diverse forms is a major goal of biological research. This allows scientists to address two fundamentally important questions about the natural world. How do organisms diverge from each other in form? And how are these differences patterned by their genes? Research in the Masley Lab focuses on understanding the mechanisms that generate biological diversity. In particular, we study how variation in cells and genes gives rise to variation in the form of organisms. Although we can easily see biodiversity all around us, we cannot directly see the underlying processes that create this variety of shapes, sizes, and colors. Consider a fruit fly. There are thousands of species of fruit flies, and with the naked eye, it might seem like they all look the same. But let's take a closer look. There are actually some striking differences among these small insects. Species of fruit flies differ in their size and coloration. For example, many of the species shown here have a brown body, whereas others are yellow or black. Some species have clear, translucent wings, whereas others have a pattern of pigmentation spots on their wings. There are even physical differences between male and female flies, just like in many other organisms. Up close, using the powerful magnification of a microscope, we can see that males of these four particular species have unique structures that they use during mating which vary greatly in size and shape. Because other species of fruit flies do not have these structures at all, we know that the structures first appeared in the ancestors of these species and then acquired their unique sizes and shapes as a result of evolutionary change that occurred when new species formed and diverged from one ancestor. These morphological differences that we observe in the adult fly are the result of differences in the way that these structures develop as the fly undergoes metamorphosis from a larva to an adult. Ultimately, differences in the genes among these species help direct these differences in development. Our lab's research is focused on identifying important differences in the DNA sequences that make up the fly's genes, and we investigate how these differences affect the development of species variation in size and shape. The order and timing of the expression of genes inside a fly directs specific cells how to grow and function as the fly develops and during its adult life. Sometimes, as the cells within a fly multiply and replicate their genetic material, a change occurs when the DNA sequence gets copied and a new DNA sequence is created. The new versions of these genes may get passed on to the offspring of this fly, which can change how these flies will develop and these changes can become more pronounced over time as populations diverge from one another. We can identify what DNA combinations make these structures look so different from each other. When we discover which genes have changed between species, we can perform experiments to understand how the differences in these genes affect developmental processes like cell division and cell growth that form the structures inside the fly. To measure the effects of this genetic variation on development, our lab takes advantage of cutting-edge microscopy and imaging techniques. These techniques allow us to directly observe how these structures take shape as an individual fly proceeds through metamorphosis. By attaching fluorescent molecules to proteins that make up cell membranes, we can watch how these structures grow and take shape as the fly larva develops. Watch how these structures develop in real time in Drosophila melanogaster, the common fruit fly, Notice how the reproductive structures grow out of other developing tissue. You can see that the structures in Drosophila simulans grow much larger in the same amount of time. This could be due to individual cells growing larger, or the cells could be dividing more frequently, or even a combination of these phenomena. In Drosophila mauritiana, the structures do not grow nearly as much as in the other two species during the same developmental time period. The ability to watch development proceed in real time helps us learn about our model system of fruit flies, but it can also give clues about similar tissue development in other organisms, even in humans. Using fruit flies as a model, we can investigate the processes of cell growth and cell division to understand how genetic differences direct development.
Understanding the genetic and developmental foundations of variation is important for understanding what gives rise to biodiversity. Another important aspect of understanding trait variation is understanding the consequences of differences among individuals and species. We know that males use these structures during mating, so are there consequences for mating between species that have diverged? Do these structures help keep species distinct? When males and females of the same species mate, there is complementarity among their reproductive traits, which results in a highly successful mating. But if mating is attempted between a male and female pair from two different species, it is much less successful. In fact, we are learning that mismatch between male and female reproductive traits can have some surprising consequences for reproduction. For example, a female often reduces the number of eggs that she lays after mating with a male whose reproductive structures are mismatched with her own. Ultimately, that female will pass on fewer of those male's genes and fewer of her own genes to her pool of offspring, helping to reinforce mating among individuals with complementary reproductive traits. As time goes on, the genes in different populations of flies will diverge more and more, and as a result, the effects on the development of individuals in those populations will also diverge. Given enough time and enough change, entirely different species can form. We can incorporate what we learn about the genes and developmental processes in each species of fly to help us understand how small changes in DNA over time can lead to big changes in the fly's body that affect how well the fly can pass on its own genes through mating. More broadly, Studying species of fruit flies that are very similar allows us to see how these small changes begin to accumulate and eventually lead to the vastly different sizes and shapes that we see among organisms in the natural world around us. These processes have been at work since life began, and they are still at work today inside all plants and animals. Therefore, what we learn by studying fruit flies can help us understand how genetic variation controls cell and tissue growth in a variety of organisms. Our lab and the labs of our colleagues around the world are studying different aspects of these important phenomena to make great advances in understanding how biodiversity is generated across the planet. So, the next time you find a fruit fly in your kitchen, take a moment before you swat it away to think about these seemingly insignificant creatures. Studying biological processes within individual flies and comparing the differences in development between flies helps us understand not only how genes direct cell and tissue growth, but also the amazing variety of life on Earth. This research was made possible by funding from the National Science Foundation. To learn more about research in the Masley Lab, please visit our website at masleylab.com and follow us on Twitter at Masley Lab.